let's we're gonna deal with crazy word right here. I don't you might have done a little bit of this in uh, algebra one. I'm not really sure if you did or not. It's not usually an algebra one topic, but I know that Mrs. Swam has taught that before. So trigonometry. Have you ever heard that word? Trigonometry? Or of course we shorten it to what? Trig. Right. Sounds kind of cool. Anybody have any idea what that means? Trigonometry or what it studies or what do you use? Okay, well, that's a good idea because of the try. Very good. Um, what we're on chapter eight, and what was the title of chapter eight? What are we doing all through chapter eight? Dealing with what kind of triangles, though? Right triangles. So really, this is kind of like a study of right triangles. Not just, it doesn't only have to do with right triangles, but the stuff we're going to do the next couple days is just going to deal with right triangles. So let's put a right triangle in here. All right. And let's label some stuff. This is very important. You may not think this part's important, but it is because it's gonna it all builds, all right? And so you need to understand this. Let's label this angle A, this angle B, and this angle C. And let's just take a look at angle A. Forget angle B and forget angle C right now. Let's just take a look at angle A. So if I'm referring to angle A, so you're standing here, right here. Okay, this is you. Right there. Boop, boop, there you are. Does that look like you? So that's you standing right there. You're at angle A. And if I wanted to take a look at this BC, what, what's, I, let's do this first. I'm sorry. What about AC? What would I, what would I call? What would I name? The hypotenuse. How do you know it's the hypotenuse? Because it's what? It's cross or it's opposite the right angle. Okay? So we call that the hypotenuse. So that's the first one we'll do. That's the really hypotenuse. All right. That's the really important one. Actually, they're all important, but... That's the one that stands out more than any of them because it's got their own its own special name because the side that's opposite the right angle is a hypotenuse. Now let's talk about angle A again. You're standing right here. What would I call this side right here to angle A? Yeah, it is. It does look shorter than this, but it's not always going to be shorter. Um, it's what we said. The hypotenuse is what to the right angle? Opposite. Okay, opposite the right angle. But what is this side? This side is what? opposite angle A. Well, we don't know it's 30 degrees. I didn't put a 30 in there, so we cannot assume it's 30 degrees, even though it kind of looks like it, right? So we can't say that it's, it's opposite the 30 degree, but remember where I said I'm standing? I'm standing at angle what? At angle A. So it's opposite of what? Angle A. Would you agree? So I'm going to put the word opposite right here. But it's not opposite everything, is it? Remember, I said I'm standing right here. I'm concentrating on angle A right now. But what about angle C? Would this side be considered opposite angle C? No, this one would be opposite angle C, right? But I'm not talking about angle C. I'm just dealing with angle A. So if I'm dealing with angle A, this side is opposite angle A. What about this side right here to angle A? We've used this word before, probably earlier in the year. It's connected, right? I mean, one of these legs is part of this side, right, or one of the sides of this angle right here. Do you see angle A? It's, so it's what? This side is what to angle A? It's next to it. What's a better word? Say it, Brown. Oh, uh, Mary, you said it? Adjacent. Okay, adjacent. Do you remember that word from earlier in the year? Okay. We talked a lot more detail about adjacent sides, but We'll just say it's adjacent. It's next to it. Some people say, yeah, but the hypotenuse is next to it. Why can't I call this adjacent? Well, because remember, the hypotenuse is a little more important, okay? It's got its own name. It's always going to be the hypotenuse because it's opposite what? The right angle, all right? So even though technically the hypotenuse is adjacent to this angle A, we don't call it the adjacent side, okay? We call it the hypotenuse. Everybody got that? Or we could call it the adjacent leg and the opposite leg because the hypotenuse is not a leg. It's just the hypotenuse. But that's all about angle A. What if I said angle C? Let's do this. Let's color coordinate this. Let's put that in red. All right? So all the white ones go together and all the red ones are going to go together. So look at this. Look at angle C. I'll put two arcs right there. Look at angle C. What would this side right here be, side AB? What would it be to angle C? It would be opposite. All right? So it all depends on which angle you're looking at, doesn't it? It all depends on which angle you're talking about. So if I'm talking about angle A, this would be opposite, this would be adjacent. But if I'm talking about angle C, 
if I'm referring to angle C, then this side over here would be opposite. And what would this side be to angle C? This would be adjacent. Okay? So it all depends on which angle you're looking at. And that's really important. You may not think that's a big deal, but it's actually a pretty big deal with what we're going to do here. Does that make sense? All right. Hopefully got that written down. Let's draw another right triangle. And we'll just draw about like that. Again, it's not 30, 60, 90. It's not 45, 45, 90. It's just a right triangle. We have no idea what those angles are. Is that all right? But I'll still call it A, B, and C. Yep. So again, let's deal with angle A right now. What if I put some numbers in here? What if I said this was like 7, this was 5, and this was, I don't know, like 17 or something like that? Okay. It's probably not very accurate. Actually, can that can it even be 17? No, because watch. Remember the two shorter ones? What do they have to do? They have to add up to be longer. Do these two add up to be bigger than 17? No, so I can't even call it 17. So what's... I can't even call it 12, so I'd have to call it something just a little bit smaller than 12. Let's call it 11, all right? Just making up numbers, all right? I have no idea if those are the actual lengths, but we're just making up numbers. Now, what I'm going to do here is this. We're going to talk about the ratio of two sides. Remember what ratios are. We had a whole entire chapter on it last chapter, didn't we? Okay, so we've talked about ratios before. But I'm going to talk about three specific ratios. So what I want to do, let's talk about, I tell you what, I shouldn't have put the numbers in yet. Sorry about that. Remember those numbers if you want. It doesn't matter, but let's do this. This is angle A, so this side right here is the opposite side, isn't it, to angle A? All right, and this side right here would be the adjacent side. I'll just shorthand my uh, words here, and this side would be the hypotenuse. I should have done that, sorry. What we're going to do here is we're going to talk about three different ratios. We're going to compare the opposite to the hypotenuse, and you're probably wondering, well, why would you do that? I'm telling you, it'll make sense in a little bit later. Okay, it might not make sense right now, but just stick with me, okay? Follow me right now. It might make sense, hopefully it'll make sense a little bit later on. So look, I'm going to compare the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Then I'm going to make up another ratio that compares the adjacent to the hypotenuse. And then I'm going to make up another ratio that compares the opposite to the adjacent. Now, each of those ratios have their own special name. So instead of just saying, okay, what is the ratio of the opposite side and the adjacent side to angle A, right? That would sit there and take a long time to write that down. So what we do is we come up with a word. And here's the words. They're kind of weird words. I'm not really sure where they came from. I mentioned that in my other class and it got me thinking I should probably look it up someday. <laughs> probably won't. Not today. <laughs> but um, let's do it. Here's the first word. Is the word sign. S-I-N-E. It's not like a road sign, S-I-G-N, it's S-I-N-E. For some reason, whoever came up with this stuff, and I don't know who it was, but whoever came up with this stuff said, all right, if I take the sine of an angle, it's going to represent a ratio between two sides of my right triangle. Which two sides? Well, between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So instead of saying... Take the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse of angle A. Instead of saying that, you know what they're going to say? Just find the sine of angle A. Everybody see that? So that word sine means I take the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Now, we don't really even use the whole word sine right here. They shorthand it. It's not much shorter, it's just one letter shorter, but they shorthand it to just the first three letters. So instead of saying the word sine, S-I-N-E, of A, we just put S-I-N. Now it looks like you would pronounce it sin, but we don't say that. We say it's the sign. We still say it's the word sign. This is just a shorthand word, or a shorthand for it. So the sine of angle A is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. All right? Here's another one. Here's another ratio. And it has a crazy word, too, and it's called the cosine. The cosine 
is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Remember, these are just ratios. These words right here, they're not variables. They're just, it's just a word that represents the comparison. I'm comparing the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, okay? It's just a comparison. Instead of me saying, okay, take angle A and compare the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Instead of saying all that stuff, guess what we're going to say? Take the cosine of angle A. But instead of using that whole word cosine, how do you think we're going to write that? Hold on, what did I say up here? First, the first how many letters? The first three. The first three letters. So I just put COS. Everybody see that? So instead of writing the whole word cosine, I'm just going to put COS. Now, I don't say cos. Um, I actually say cosine, even though it's just those three letters. All right? So I know that it stands for the cosine. Everybody with me? We got one more. Look what we did. We compared the opposite to the hypotenuse. We compared the adjacent to the hypotenuse. So I think I'm done with comparing stuff to the hypotenuse. What other ratio do you think I can compare here? What's missing? The opposite and the adjacent. Exactly right. So let's compare them. So we have a word for that, and that's called the tangent. Okay, It's called the tangent. And again, we're, all, we're dealing with angle A right here. And so what's my comparison with the tangent? It's the opposite and the adjacent. So opposite goes on top and adjacent goes on the bottom. Again, instead of writing the whole word tangent, we shorten it to T-A-N. Now we don't just we don't say tan. Some people do say tan, but normally we don't say tan. We actually say the word tangent, but we write it T-A-N. And that's equal to the opposite over the adjacent. All right, so here's the three things right here. There's the sine, there's the cosine, and here's the tangent. And I promise there's a real practical reason for learning these things, and we're going to learn them probably more tomorrow than today. All right, but there is definitely a practical reason to know these things, and it's all programmed into your calculator and all that. Before they had these calculators, you'd look in the book. I don't even know if they have them in the book anymore. I bet you they do. But there's a um, there's usually a chart with a whole bunch of numbers all over the place. And I really don't know if it's in this book or not. I'm flipping through and I don't see it. It used to be it was always in the back of a math book, like geometry or algebra 2 book. And you'd have a whole big old chart with tons and tons of numbers. And I don't see it in this book. But the reason I don't have it in, in charts anymore is because everybody's got a calculator, all right? So it's all programmed in the calculator. Do you see those words on the calculator? Look at this calculator right here. Yep, there's the sine, there's the cosine, and there's the tangent, all right? And that's what that stuff represents. What does it mean? It means you're taking the opposite side and dividing it by the hypotenuse of that particular uh, triangle, right triangle. Now, this only works with right triangles. Okay, it only works with right triangles. So if I had an obtuse or an acute triangle, it wouldn't work. It only works with right triangles. And you don't even know what I'm talking about as far as it working, do you? But we're going to get to it in a second. Let's, um, let's rewrite those three things. Let's start with the sign. So the sign is what over what? Look at your notes. What's the sign? Opposite over, Opposite over hypotenuse. Watch, I'm just going to write it like this. Okay, yes. Oh, time. Okay, I got one minute. All right, let me finish this up. Then the uh, cosine is the what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And then the tangent is the what? Opposite over the adjacent. Let me do this in less than a minute. This is SOH, this is CAH, and this is TOA. We have a made up word, but it sounds kind of cool. It's so ka toa. And that way, you can memorize what each of these things actually is, okay? Sokatoa. Everybody say it one more one time. Here we go. Sokatoa. On three. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, that was weak. One more time. One, two, three. Sokatoa. Remember, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent.